very much. Now, as well as the tropicals, we also have an urgent question this afternoon. Neil Findlay. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government for what reason uh, COVID-19 cases identified in Edinburgh on the 2nd of March 2020 were not made public. Cabinet Secretary Jean Freeman. On Sunday, the 1st of March, the Scottish Government confirmed the first positive case of COVID-19 in Scotland, advising that the person affected was from the Chayside area and their case was related to travel uh, to an affected country. On the evening of the 3rd of March, ministers were made aware of two further cases, which we reported on the 4th of March and advised that in those instances, one individual was resident in the Grampian area and the other resident in Ayrshire. Neil Findlay. Pandemic risk is the number one item on the government risk register. At the time, COVID was spreading throughout Asia and Europe, and that was at the time of the Nike conference. So why is it taking two months and a BBC documentary for the outbreak in my region to be made public? Cabinet Secretary. So there's a couple of points I need to make very clearly. There is uh, no knowledge by us uh, of that outbreak in the conference at the time the conference was taking place. The knowledge of the cases are as I have read out. On the 4th of March, we reported those cases. One of those cases was connected to that Nike conference. That then, as with the first two, triggered Health Protection Scotland to undertake the contact tracing work. In the case of uh, the relationship with the Nike conference, that contact tracing was an international exercise. Eight of the cases uh, were resident in Scotland. And the strong clinical advice we received was not, as in the case of not saying specifically uh, where in Tayside uh, that first uh, case came from, uh, also in this case, the strong clinical advice we received was not to uh, say where uh, the trigger case had come from because it would then be possible to identify individuals. And in the balance of patient confidentiality, uh, the advice was not to make that public at that point. Neil Findlay. Um, we've had two months since that happened. That information could have been made public in that two months period, but we've had to wait until a documentary has been made. Um, 70 delegates attended the conference over two days at the Carlton Hotel. Uh, presumably they were working, mixing and socialising with staff and visitors inside and outside of the hotel. Uh, we were told uh, by the National Clinical Director all cases in the early stage were subject to test, trace and isolate. I have a letter here from NHS Lothian stating that between the 6th of February and the 13th of March, over a five-week period, only 30 families were contacted as part of all TTI cases, not just the Nike conference cases. So, can the Cabinet Secretary tell me how many staff, guests and visitors who attended the Carrollton Hotel, how many shop workers, bar workers, hospitality workers, taxi drivers across Edinburgh were contacted as part of TTI following the Nike conference? Cabinet Secretary. So there's a, a number of points to make. First, first of all, I, I hear what Mr Finlay is saying about why did it take a BBC documentary to uh, mention the Nike conference. And I have to ask... To what purpose? The point of all of this is about identifying cases and in those uh, early days when we were in that containment phase undertaking uh, contact tracing in order to uh, ensure we could break the transmission as best we could at that point. Contact tracing is about getting information from an individual about who they have been in contact with for more than 15 minutes and at a distance of less than two metres. That, that means there will be a number of individuals, a person passes in the street, who are not in that contact tracing list because the contact was neither for long enough nor close enough for it to warrant contact tracing in order to meet the results uh, or the purpose of contact tracing. And in terms of the numbers that NHS Lothian uh, have given you, Mr Finlay, I said that this was an international conference. And so the contact tracing was an international effort. Some of it was in Scotland, 
Some of it was in other countries uh, globally of delegates who uh, came from those other countries. And so the contact tracing was that international effort to identify where those individuals had been in touch uh, with others and to then trace those individuals and ensure that the proper clinical advice and support and so on was given to those individuals. So all of that happened as it should have happened. And the government published the information about the first case, the second and subsequent cases, as I've just outlined. Miles Briggs, before by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. The First Minister said she wants to be open and transparent with people in Scotland. This has clearly not been the case in regard to this case. Now, we've heard the excuses from the Cabinet Secretary, but why did ministers not report an outbreak had emerged in the Lothian Health Board area, as she's outlined has been the case in both uh, Tayside and in Ayrshire? And given the guest who was staying at the hotel during the conference told programme makers that he had not been tested, contact traced by anyone from the Scottish Health Service, why did we see such a basic failure in test trace isolate methods used at the start of this crisis? Cabinet Secretary. These are not excuses. These, this is factual information. It's not excuses. And I don't think anyone could accuse me or the First Minister of this, or this government of not publishing and making clear the maximum amount of information we can and the facts where we are confident about the robustness of the data that we have. And where we're not confident of that, we tell you we're not publishing that yet because we're not confident about that data. What was reported in all cases was where the individual was a resident of, where they were a resident of, not in all cases where we think they contacted, contracted the virus. So in the first case, we said the individual was a resident of Tayside and we believed they had contracted the virus from travel in a country where the virus was present. We didn't name the country. So our approach has been consistent in all of this. And if there is an individual who believes that they were in contact with someone who was at that conference and that they should have been contacted by HPS, then the straightforward way of dealing with that is to give me that information and let me ask HPS to respond to me and then I will respond to Mr Briggs accordingly. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy Hunt, the former Secretary of State for Health yesterday in Parliament, said that there was a, a culture of secrecy that was responsible for the UK's slow response to the virus. And given that Scotland entered lockdown in lockstep with the UK, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with Mr Hunt's analysis? And in that light, should the Scottish Government have been more open about this out outbreak and the advice upon which it was basing its decisions? Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> I don't believe that the Scottish Government could at any point in this entire exercise around COVID-19, either me or the First Minister or any other member of government, be accused of secrecy. We have, and it has been recognised by independent uh, experts, scientists and others, uh, been very open in the amount of data that we have published in our attempts to consistently improve on that range of data, attempts that we uh, continue with. So I do not think that secrecy uh, has been a characteristic in any respect of the approach that we have taken. In terms of the scientific and clinical advice uh, that came to us as it did uh, to other uh, governments across the UK uh, from SAGE but also from others uh, and as uh, the member knows most recently from the establishment of our own uh, advisory group to the Chief Medical Officer that is chaired by uh, Professor Andrew Morris, uh, the details of which have been public from the outset. Skull Hamilton. Officer, uh, the BBC documentary also revealed that Wendy Russell uh, contracted COVID-19 at a birthday party on the 7th of March. Several of her relatives were also infected that night and her daughter Anna has now lost three grandparents because of it. This was meant to be at the height of the containment phase where all COVID patients were isolated and their movements traced. Yet nobody contacted Wendy after her infection and she feared she may have passed it on to others at several public events. 
given there were clearly serious deficiencies in test, track and trace during the containment phase, dealing with just dozens of COVID patients, what confidence can the public have that, we, that no such deficiencies will exist when we try to upscale this to the tens of thousands? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the first thing I have to say is, having watched the disclosure programme last night, I found uh, that family's uh, recount of what had happened to them deeply moving, and they have my deepest condolences. It was truly a tragic event. In terms of Mr Cole Hamilton's uh, question, uh, we have published our strategy for uh, test, track, isolate and support. Uh, I will, in due course, uh, when uh, we are, uh, have moved on further in this, uh, provide further details. Uh, he will know that uh, we are scaling up our uh, testing operation, but also that uh, yesterday and again today and during this week, the adverts are there uh, to begin to uh, recruit the additional contact tracers uh, that we need on top of what our uh, local health protection teams uh, are bringing together so that we can maximise, uh, as our uh, document said, uh, the numbers of contact tracers we believe we need. We need, we believe, at least 2,000 in order to ensure that we can speedily uh, trace, but also, as I said earlier to Ms Lennon, that we uh, speed up the to total turnaround time in terms of taking the test sample and uh, producing the result with contact tracing beginning before the a trigger uh, case uh, test result uh, has uh, returned, so that we are as quick as possible in all of that. I, I believe that we are learning lessons as we go, that our strategy, but more importantly, our delivery now, and the focus on that delivery uh, will cover the numbers that we require, the speed that we require, and the ease with which individuals can advise us that they have symptoms of COVID-19. And very importantly, the motivation and the support that we need to uh, give to members of the public in a circumstance where they may well be asked to isolate on more than one occasion. Thank you very much. Now, I'm aware there's ongoing interest in this particular question, but I'm afraid we have to move on to the next item of business. Apologies to the various speakers I couldn't call there.